Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial of uh, Complete Web API. So what I'll be covering up today is uh, creating the database structure. I also have uh, another interesting thing which uh, I usually follow uh, that is storing my uh, database keywords and my TV scripts uh, in source control using something called as uh, Visual Studio DB project. So let me show you how you can uh, create that. And we'll also create uh, the database table which we need. I have already created uh, the database uh, which we need. Uh, so if you can see this, I have a local uh, SQL server that I, ha I have created organization app uh, dot uh, db. So let's uh, start. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll go to the app settings and create the connection string. So if you see, I have already created the connection string. Already created the connection string for that. So now uh, the way you create uh, the uh, Visual Studio DB project is uh, click on view, uh, go to server explorer. Then you can just connect to the database. Uh, you can just put in your server name and I'll choose my database. Organization app DB, that's the connection, click okay. So uh, once you have connected to the database, what you have to do is right click and browse in Explorer. Once you do that, uh, you select your database here and just create a new project. So now you can give uh, the name of your project. I will just follow the same uh, naming convention. And since this is a DB, I'll prefix it with a dot DB. Okay, let me choose the location where I want to store my project now. Let me just do that. Okay, so we've uh, done that. So as you can see, uh, you just have to uncheck this and this, and I click on start. So what it will do is it will start creating the uh, Visual Studio DB project. So the way this helps you is you can add this project like any other Visual Studio project to your source control. And uh, uh, there's no need of maintaining SQL scripts like stored procedures table somewhere else. It can go along with your application and be in your source uh, control. And uh, you can also publish uh, whatever uh, data as well as uh, schema which you have from Visual Studio to your SQL Server. I'll also show you that publish method uh, in this tutorial. So a process is done. Let's go from finish. And if you see, we have a new project here. We have a new project uh, here called as uh, organization.tp. So what I also like to do is I like to organize it in another folder. So let me create another solution folder. And I'll name it as database. And I move this project here. So we have our database project inside the database folder. So let's try to clean and build this. Okay, so now the structure I like to follow is I just create a folder. And new folder, video, so that uh, the folder structure is consistent with uh, whatever is there in SQL Management Studio. Okay, so I prefer adding tables inside the tables folder and also other components of SQL like stored procedures. Okay, so since we have this now, let's start creating our tables. 
if you start creating the tables, so we you have two tables. Let me add tables. Uh, I'll name it as TDL companies. So this is the standard naming convention which I follow. Uh, that is uh, prefixing uh, any table with the prefix TBL. And uh, similarly for stored procedure, you can prefix SP, okay? Uh, it's my way or my, it's my preference uh, and it's also standard way uh, with which uh, you can go ahead, but you're free to use your standard or whichever standard uh, your company follows. So I'll add this. So if you can see it, uh, has a cool UI designer as well as the scripts like SQL uh, Management Studio. Uh, also, one more thing I'll uh, touch upon is uh, whenever I name my uh, tables, I name it as plural. So if you can see it's companies, that's because uh, a table is a collection of records and one record corresponds to uh, an entity, which we can further map uh, to an object in the memory like Company can be an object, but when it's in the database, it's plural, that is companies. So let's also create uh, another table called as employees, and we'll have the referential integrity for this uh, there uh, by using foreign key. So one company can have many employees, so we'll set that up. So first let's create uh, all the columns we need in the company's table. So I'm just paste it here. So if you see, I have uh, uh, one more thing which I would uh, like to touch upon is I always try to have uh, uh, a where care ID in uh, my tables, which is a primary key and as well as uh, a clustered index. Uh, because uh, uh, if we do that way, what we can do is we can have a short GUIDs passed from the code. Okay. And I also follow uh, this approach wherein I have another integer column uh, called paging order, which uh, I can mark as uh, a unique key and a long clustered index so that we can use it for paging if we want to display it in any uh, user interface which we want, like a uh, page table, et cetera, okay? So we have the company's table ready here. Uh, if you see, I have also uh, a non-clustered index set up on the name column so that uh, if there are large number of table, uh, large number of records in the table, uh, if we are searching, uh, we don't have any slowness or performance issues, okay? Uh, let me set up the employees table now. So similarly, we will have employees table and this one will have a uh, foreign key, which is corresponding to uh, the company's table. Okay. Uh, and also this one is also having the paging order column, which is an identity column. Okay. So now once we have created our tables, the next step is uh, publishing this uh, so that we have it ready in our database. Uh, before that, uh, what I'll do is I'll also create an initialization script. So you can create a script uh, by just right clicking here and selecting add script and I'll select a uh, post deployment script. So basically, uh, if you want to create any uh, data in the master tables or populate data, you can do it with this kind of script. I'll just name it as initialization. Initialization script, and I'll add my initialization script here. So I'll basically populate uh, both the tables with some entries. And I also like to uh, have uh, nice comments here, like noting that this is for TBL companies, so you TBL employees. So this is so this script will be run uh, when you publish this project. Uh, the script will be run, and once the tables are created, it will create entries in those tables. 
So now uh, we are all set up. Let's try to publish this. And the way we publish this is right click, uh, publish. And once that is done, uh, uh, what I like to do is I first create the publish profile so that I can use it in future. So click on edit and select your database. Uh, just check your connection and select OK. Yeah, uh, also uh, click on advanced and I like to uncheck this block incremental deployment at data loss metaphor because I keep on changing the schema and I keep on publishing it. Uh, so what it does is it always uh, recreates the table. So I'll check this as well. We'll drop and recreate the table. Click on OK. Uh, and I'll save this profile as this. Okay. So since I've saved the profile, I can uh, load the profile the next time and publish it. I'll show you that. So next time, uh, what I'll do is I'll just say publish. I don't have to do the setup again. I'll just load the profile which I've already saved. And then I'll just click on publish. So if you see the progress of your publish will be shown here. If there are any errors, you will be able to see those errors here and make the necessary changes until you see all green ticks, which means your tables are successfully published and the database is published and we have a green tick. So let's check the database now if we have uh, the items created, uh, let's come here, select uh, companies. Employees. Let's try to run this and see if our data has been populated. Yeah, so if you see this, we have all the data which is populated. Okay, so uh, that's it from this tutorial. So we have set up the database now. In the next tutorial, what I'll be covering up is uh, creation of uh, repository pattern and uh, unit of work. So we'll be using uh, repository, generic repository pattern and the unit of work frame, uh, framework. Uh, uh, and also use uh, an ORM library, a lightweight ORM library called Dapper. So I usually prefer, prefer uh, sticking to Dapper instead of entity framework because Dapper is lightweight and I can customize it according to uh, my own queries, uh, store procedures, etc. Yeah, so that's it from this tutorial. See you in the next one.